As a trader, most likely you've heard of fair value gap. It's a special kind of gap that happens in all kinds of markets. And there are many videos on YouTube, articles, and blogs about the subject, but really all of them are BS as usual, and none of them, at least the one I saw, attack this problem quantitatively. So this is what I'm going to do in this video. I will show you how to spot these fair value gaps and how to trade them. This is an example of fair value gap. To spot it, we need to look at three bars in a row. So this is bar number one, bar number two, and bar number three. We are looking at a gap between the high of bar number one and the low of bar number three, while bar number two being a big range bar. So these two bars, they don't overlap. There is a space between them, but they both overlap this big, huge bar. And so this space in orange is called fair value gap. So basically the fair value gap points to imbalance in the market. In the example I showed you where bar three is higher than bar one, the imbalance points to the bulls overcoming the bears or the buyers overcoming the sellers. Now, there is an opposite to this, which is the bar one is higher than bar three. And in this case, the sellers overcome the buyers. And that's why you have this fair value gap. So if you look anywhere on the internet on how to trade these fair value gap, usually they will point you in the direction of the gap. So if we have a buyers overcoming sellers, then you go long. And of course, the opposite to go short. Also, most of them will tell you that this fair value gap will be filled at some point in time. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but that's just what they usually say. And then they will tell you, well, if it comes back to that zone, then you should buy or sell in that zone to go in the direction. Again, nothing concrete. I didn't see any quantitative way. I didn't see any strategy built with metrics on it. And that's the normal way on YouTube. And anyway, we will do our best here to explain how to trade this. Solution number one is to go with the gap. So in this case, if the fair value gap is on the long side, meaning bar three is higher than bar one, then we will go long. And of course, it's if the fair value gap is in the, on the opposite side, meaning bar one is higher than bar three, then we will go short. The next way to trade the fair value gap usually that you will find is that the fair value gap will be filled at some point in the future. So the fair value gap happens. You keep watching the chart until the price comes back to this gap to fill it. And then once it's in the gap, you buy it with the expectation to go up. And of course, it's the opposite for the short fair value gap. In this video, I will focus on trading this pattern. Now you can find the fair value gap in any market. And in trading view, there are hundreds of indicators <laughs> that can show you this. I picked this one by Lux Algo. Uh, this is the fair value gap on the long side. And you can see that we have many of them. And actually you can tweak this. So you see now it shows when it's filled. So you see when the price gets in, it gets lower and it gets lower and so on and so forth. So again, so in this case, the price comes back to fair value gap and goes down. Now, if you look at videos and blogs about this subject, they will point you to two variables, which is how big is this gap and how big is this bar? Usually they say, well, this bar needs to be too big. That's vague. But anyway, we will test it. And this needs to be too wide. Also, that's vague. But again, we will test it. So basically, we have two variables. How wide is this? And how wide is this bar? Now, in order to do this for all markets, you cannot do this in points. Because, for example, the S&P 500 will have different points than the USD Japanese yen. So you need to do this in ATR. Basically, how wide is this gap compared to the average true range of the instrument? And also, how wide is this bar compared to the average true range of this instrument? And then you can apply the strategy on any market and you can compare it easily. So here is the strategy applied in multi-charts on the S&P 500 futures. 
So currently, the way it's implemented, we don't care about the size of the gap or the size of the middle bar. So let's look at some examples. So you see this bar, the low is higher than the high of this bar. And we have this bar in the middle. That's a fair value gap. We go along next bar and we exit after one bar. And again, here, this bar low is higher than this bar high. This is the bar in the middle. We go along next bar, we exit after one bar. Holding for one bar only just to see how good the strategy is or if there is an edge. So looking at this strategy, we have 644 occurrences of this bar. On average, we are making $6. Obviously, this is a losing strategy, but it is positive nonetheless. This is the long side only. And this is the short side. So 584 trades and we are losing $77 on average. I've mentioned this hundreds of times on this channel that the S&P 500 is a mere reverting instrument tends to drift up all the time. So instead of taking the breakout measure, which is trading the fair value gap when it is on the long side, the mere reversion is we trade long when we have fair value gap on the downside. So this is what I mean. We will use this side to go long and this side to go short. So when we have a gap on the downside, we will go long. And of course, because we are trading the S&P 500, I will not even bother with the short side. So just to compare, this is the original strategy and now we are going to flip it. And as expected, we do very well. So we have 413 trades and we are doing 73 average per trade already. There is no filter, we're exiting in one day. Okay, now comes the quantitative approach. We will first test if the bar in the middle, if the range of that bar affect our strategy or not. And then we will test the gap size if it matters in the strategy or not. So here are the results of optimizing the range of the middle bar. Again, I'm doing this in average true range size. So from zero all the way to six. Zero means the strategy is the original strategy. So we have 413 trades. We're making $73 on average per trade. And this is the size of the middle bar in terms of average true range from zero all the way to six. So let's go back here. And if I sort by return to drawdown, I can actually enhance it. So 1.7, 1.6, 1.4, 8, 5. That means if the middle bar is within 1.4 to 1.9 average true range, I enhance my strategy. So comparing it to the original strategy, I make more money and a lot less drawdown. Now we are testing the size of the gap. So the gap is down and we don't care about the middle bar and we're just testing the size of the gap in ATR. And again, zero is our original strategy and we go all the way to six. And like we saw with the other one, so here about 3.6. So when the gap is about three and a half times the average true range, there are no trades. And if we go all the way up, so this is 148, if we sort by custom draw again, we can enhance the strategy. So this is the original strategy, and we have nine sizes that do, does better. And again, it looks like from 1.3, 4, 5, 7, and 8, all these ATRs are good, and then double the ATR is also good. So but these producing one trade, so I wouldn't consider these. So it looks like 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 7, and 8 are good. And we find out quantitatively that the size between 1 and 2 ATRs of the middle bar and of the gap usually produce better results when trading the fair value gap. But remember, we restrict our strategy to hold for one bar. Well, you know, one bar is extremely short. I mean, you can still do it. But let's increase our holding period, which usually for mere reversion strategies, anywhere between three and seven bars is really good. So let's pick something in the middle, maybe five, and see what we get. So this is the number of bars holding from zero to 15. And this is the net profit. And we can see we have a peak here at number five and another peak at number 14. So if I want to pick a stable area, not here, 
so this is 12 it's a stable area but i can achieve the same thing at about six so six i am surrounded by a higher point here and about the same here and the same here so let me pick six bars as the exit point so here is my strategy at six bars so for example here we have a gap between this one and this one and again we are not measuring the gap this is zero i don't care and i don't care about the length of the bar in the middle so I'm just measuring any gap with any bar in the middle and then I go long. But now I am holding for six bars. Enter next bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I exit next bar. And let's see the result of this strategy. So it's 261 trades. But look at this now, $626 on average. This is how the charts look like, 43% in the market. And this is the annual period performance. We lost in 2008, 2018, and 2022. So the effect of testing how many bars to hold is much better than the effect of the threshold of how wide is the gap or how wide is the bar in the middle. Now that we fixed our exit at six bars, which looks like a stable area, let's now go back and see if the middle bar range will affect the strategy. Remember, it used to be between one and two ATRs. And we will also test if the wide, if how wide the fair value gap is, will affect the strategy. So here is our original strategy. This is holding for six days. And now we are testing the bar in the middle in the fair value gap. So again, from zero to six. And this is the custom fitness, so 509 and five sort. The highest look at this the highest is zero this means that it doesn't matter how big is the bar in the middle if i exclude it from the equation i make the most amount of money with the least amount of drawdown this is now comparing the gap size so the fair value gap between bar number one and bar number three that's what we are measuring here again from zero to six in terms of average true range and if I sort by return to drawdown, again, zero is on the top. Not only zero is on the top, look at the next value. So this is almost 5.1 and the next one is 3.7. So the also the difference is huge between zero and the next step. So our testing shows once you increase number of bars to hold, this gap size and the bar range in the middle doesn't matter anymore, which is extremely good. Now that we have an excellent strategy, less variables, that means it's very robust. Now we can just sit and relax, add filters from our collection, and just see if we can enhance the metrics significantly. Now I tested the strategy with my market regime filters. This is version two of my market regime. They are only direction and volatility. And currently there are about 250 of them. So zero, zero is our original strategy. We're making 163,000 or drawdown. So basically we are making five to one return to drawdown ratio. Our average trade is at 626. So if I sort by custom to return drawdown and let's look at our, this is our original strategy. So 14, so we have about 13 filters that doing very well. Now remember I'm sorting by return to drawdown so it's not necessarily we are making more money, although we have some filters making more money, but it's not because my, my main concern is the drawdown. And without looking at the code for the filters, I can tell you that filters up to number 30, they are volatility. So this is volatility, this is volatility, this one, and this one, and this one. And then the rest are direction. So sitting at the top is direction, number two is volatility. And if I pick this one, so this is filter 73. And this is about 40 trades that we taking out, but we took out only the one in the bad regime. Now remember this one at the top, it's making the same amount of money almost. So the original strategy making 163, this is making 169, but the drawdown is 50% less. So this is huge. And this filter 66, is again a derivative of short-term direction. Now remember, these are not optimizations. Each filter is fixed. So now I cannot go back to filter 66 and optimize 66 on a value. This is fixed. 
all my market regime filters are fixed you cannot touch them you cannot optimize them. so picking the strategy now this is how it looks 141 trades making 1200 dollars per trade that's very good 65 percent win rate this is how the curve looks like i mean uh, this is uh, beautiful it's going up all the time with uh, simple drawdowns and actually we can look at these drawdowns so it's about six thousand dollars in the beginning and lately it's about eleven thousand dollars annual period analysis down in 2008 almost scratched 2011 and 2018 is down and since 2018 we are up all the way now filters comes in all shapes and sizes in fact i have 700 more filters that i can put in this optimization but i didn't want to bother you with Usually, direction and volatility are the most effective, uh, like just like I showed you. Easily come up with 15 better strategies than your original uh, strategy just by applying simple filters. Now, my market regime filters are proprietary. They are only available to the students in my Algo Trading Masterclass. But still, you can easily mimic my strategy performance. If you are using a directional filter like uh, moving average or linear regression, or you can use the volatility filter using ATR or standard deviation. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video that the fair value gap exists in all markets. Of course, you can apply now this strategy in other markets, but you need to test from scratch. Now, I can use the same strategy on, let's say, the Dow Jones because the Dow Jones is highly correlated with the S&P 500. This is the result of the strategy applied to the Dow Jones. 112,000 for the Dow Jones, this is really, really good. Three to one return to drawdown ratio. Total trades 200, making about 550 per trade. And annual analysis, it's a scratch 2007, down 2008, 2010, and 2018. And this is how the curves looks like. Again, it's really, really good. To learn more strategies, watch this video and I will see you there.